It's Atlanta's number one hip hop station, Hot 107 out at home for the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Of course, you know it's your folk, Be High. Radio Shout It, man. Stepping in the building, I got a singer, songwriter, legend, producer, one of the greatest to ever do it. Jazz and Faye in the building, man. What's good with it, boss? Oh, man, I'm just in the building, man. You know, checking the product and the revenue, man, doing, doing what I do, you dig? I can definitely dig that. Speaking of the product and the revenue, man, that Quiet Storm, Vodka, Hookah, yeah. I mean, what's going on, man? That Quiet Storm, Vodka, man, you know what I'm saying? Y'all gotta follow, follow that, you know what I mean? Quiet Storm Vodka is, you know, um, it's a it's a new vodka. My man Corey Lamb uh, hooked me up with it. I'm actually the uh, uh, the brand ambassador, mm -hmm. and it's a uh, it's also Georgia grown, you know, and also distributed from Georgia, yeah, down in Savannah, you know, uh, uh, distributors and and then distillery, you mm -hmm. know, is right here in Georgia as well. So you know that's a big thing for you know all of the um, you know the liquor stores and package stores and you know all that. Mm -hmm. you know, that's, I didn't know it was that big of a deal, but but yeah. it's, a, it's really a big deal. And yeah, you know I mean we sold close to like four hundred and some odd cases of it in the Ooh. last few months. You know what I mean? Just via social media and who we know and, you know, love hip hop. Mm -hmm. or, um, you know, shout out to Mona Scott. She helped us out a lot with mm -hmm. it. You know what I mean? We had it at Yandy's wedding and had it at had a lot of different, you know, um, just, just you know, organic. You know yeah. what I mean? Just organic. A lot of fashion shows, whatever. What was it that made you decide to get into the liquor business? I mean, just, it's, it's the numbers, man. The yeah. num <laughs> <laughs> numbers, man. Dollars and cents. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It just it, and, and and you know I love uh, vodka, so mm -hmm. I mean I, I couldn't get in, involved with a with a brand that I couldn't you know consume. That's right. You know what That's I mean? That's right. I, I got to be able to drink it, and I got to be able to commit to it. And I mean it's yeah. it's so smooth. Mm -hmm. I mean mm -hmm. it's distilled seven times. If you if, if you want to know, Ciroc is uh, distilled five. Ooh. So it's like smoother than that. Oh man, that is crazy no, I mean, right there. Shout out to Diddy, but you know this ain't Ciroc. Right, this is a class Come on, baby. It's <laughs> just real big, man. Monsters, Mac and Sasquatch, Pepper, man. Fizzle. Oh, I mean, speaking of that fizzle, man, I mean, what was it like coming up in Memphis, man, the home of Stacks and Sun Records and all of that good stuff, and having a family that was embedded in the music up there? Oh, man, that's, it was crazy, bro. I mean, you know, actually, like, when I was five years old, I, I moved to California. I don't know a lot of people know that. Uh -huh. I moved to Los Angeles, and actually, I went to, like, probably 14, 15 different schools. Ooh. You know what I mean? So... That's why I'm so well cultured. You yeah. know what I mean? If if, if people really go deep, I, I can I, I do all kinds of music and mm -hmm. I mean there's there've been times where I was like the only black kid in my school. You Ooh. know what I mean? Yeah. So like living out in Orange County, I lived in Orange County for a while. Yeah. So you see not uh my dad is one of the Barquets, original members of the Barquets, and That's my right. mom is also, you know, she sang for a lot of people like Barbara Streisand, Natalie Cole, mm -hmm. you know, some of the greats, you know what I mean? So um I was with her and on her hip. Mm -hmm. So we almost lived like gypsies. You know what I'm saying? We was all over the place, man. You know, you just never know what we would be one year after the next. Mm -hmm. So, you know, me growing up, like, and then I went back to, to um, Memphis, like, when I was, like, about 17. Yeah. And then, you know, I'd go back and forth in the summer. Yeah. You know, um, but I'm, like, half and half. Like, you yeah. know, half Memphis, half well, well, I'm three three parts. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I'm half. I'm I'm I'm, I'm Memphis. I'm Atlanta now because I've yeah. been in Atlanta for yeah. like like twenty what twenty some odd years. That's right. A long time. I mean, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. So, really, uh, it, man, the, the beginning of it started in Memphis and then yeah. went to Cali and back. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I'm I'm back in L.A. too, back mm -hmm. and forth. So it's a lot. How was it when you winded up getting into that production and realizing that producing was the way out? I, it's, it's crazy how I got into production because I mean I didn't come in it to produce. I came in it to sing and rap. Oh man! I, want, I, I had a deal back in in ninety two. Yeah. And uh, on Electric Records. Uh huh. And um, the the uh, the Bob Krasnow who was over the label back then, he um, he, he passed away. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So they they came in with the leaders of the new school and all of that stuff. And anything that wasn't gold and above, they mm -hmm. dropped it. From the label, so of course I was new. Yeah. I just came in, got dropped from the label. So oh. going going back to Memphis, you yeah. know, with a major deal and getting dropped from a label, that was like, you know what I mean, yeah. pie in the face. You exactly. know what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. So so I was just really looking for a, a whole new thing. I, I got with a crew called the Funkaholics. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We mm -hmm. we got down and and uh, uh, came to Atlanta. We That's said, right. man, we're going to Atlanta, man. We're going, you know, I'm going to start fresh. I'm going to start new. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I always love Atlanta anyway. My dad used to bring me out here. That's right. You know what I mean? He was he was out here all the time just on the music tip and, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, just just networking. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, 
through that. And I, when, when my pops brought me out here when I was young, I, I said, man, dad, when I'm moving out here. Yeah. I said, I'm going to live out here. Because I just felt, when I came across the city line, I was just like, some some energy pulling. Mm -hmm. like I, I'm, I'm a real energy type of guy. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I can feel the vibes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I taught, and that was back when Cameo and all of them was hot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They were, I mean, they was dying down then. They, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It was kind of, they were getting older. Mm -hmm. But, but, they were still running things, and That's L.A. Right. was starting to do his thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? L.A. and Babyface, they were doing their thing as, you know, executives. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so when I came out here and I saw that, and I saw, you know, Rico Wade and, yeah. and the Dungeon Family and all of them, that was where I saw, you know, my place mm -hmm. in, in Atlanta, Georgia. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When when I heard Outkast, uh -huh. I was like, you know, I didn't know, I didn't know where they were from. Uh-huh. You know, um, because there was really no Atlanta voice on the hip hop tip. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like all I knew Atlanta for was like booty shake and you know what I'm saying? And and, and some of the things that J D was doing in the earlier time. Mm -hmm. You know, that was before Criss Cross and all of them. Well, I yeah. think Criss Cross might have been out too. But um but it didn't give you that Atlanta that thing that, that we seen eye to eye. That's right. When I heard that cast and I heard, you know, that that, that dungeon family, mm -hmm. I was like, That's it. That's it. I thought they was from the hood, from 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 Atlanta, so I mean from Memphis somewhere. Yeah. And then I looked into it, did my research, <laughs> and there was players ball on the Christmas yeah. album. Yeah, yeah. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. they, you know what I mean? And and that, and that, and I was like, I'm moving there. That vibe yeah. right there. I said I'm gonna meet. I said, I, you know what I said? I said I'm gonna meet Rico Wade, uh -huh. and he gonna hear my beats, and he gonna sign me. Ooh. <laughs> That's what, what I said. What, what happened when you moved down? <laughs> what happened was, uh, um. I was um I was actually staying at the Castle Gate Hotel. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And me and, and and my manager at the time and my group, we was down here and we was down here all the way down to our last dime. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then I met, she told me she knew somebody. Res is soul, MC Bree. Mm. Met MC Bree. MC Bree took me in. He See was that? like, man, he heard my music and he was like, yo. He said, you did that? I was like, yeah. He said, play another one. Mm. He said, you did that? I was like, cassettes. He said, you did that? I was like, yeah, I got them all right here. I had a Nike box. Yeah. You opened it up, and I had all these floppies in it. I was like, I got them right here, man. I could pull them up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I said, you got a drum machine? Because <laughs> I didn't even have a drum machine at that time. I had I had everything was back in, 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 in Memphis, and I was yeah. going to bring it all up. You know what I'm saying? Once I, once I connected, you know what I mean? I had everything on cassettes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, uh, man, long story short, he, he put me right in his house. Let me stay in his house. And I, I chose mostly to be in the basement, in the yeah. studio. What was it like being there, man? Because I know he had a lot of artists running in and out of there. I man. mean, like like uh, a producer heaven. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Once, once, I mean, you, you I, I met, what, Drew Down, uh, Too Short, Snoop Dogg, DOC, Warren G, uh, Red Man, Eric Sermon, Key Sweat. I mean, Ooh. all of them people, I end up producing every last one of them. Every last one of them. That's crazy. Every last one. I end up producing them all, and I I, I I did a situation where, you know, me and me and Eric, if we did something, you know what I'm saying, he, you know, he got production credit for it, I yeah. got co-production credit for it, and, and, and he would get the big check, and I'd give me a little something. Yeah. But back then, like, you know, he was like, I'm gonna give you five grand. I'm like, what? Because, you know, that was back when you was getting, man, 56,000. He was getting, like, 50, 60 grand. Ooh. You know what I mean? Yeah. He had, like, platinum plaques just in a, in cardboard boxes just that he that people sent in to him. That's crazy. Yeah, man. Shout out to Eric Sermon, too. You know, he one yeah. of the guys that put me on. And then, you know, I met Noontime. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, uh, back up a little bit, and, mm -hmm. and we did the Tila record. That yeah. was what made Noontime find me. You know, the girls that the show enough. Now, I mean, that song right there, Jazzy, you know that that thing was a classic. And when it dropped, the sound had never been heard before in hip-hop, period, yeah. point blank. Yeah. And it drove folks crazy when that track just flat out came on. Really? You almost didn't even have to have no hook on there. No. Nah. You didn't have no verses. Nah. You didn't have to have nothing. You could have just let that thing ride. Tell you the truth, bro. We probably, me, Tila, like, I think it was Insane Wayne. Uh, and Saint Wayne was back with us at the time back then. That was yeah. before Drummer Boy was Drummer Boy was a little dude. Yeah. I, I don't think I even I think I like might have met him one time. He was a uh -huh. little guy though. He wasn't even doing beats yet. But um yeah, it's me, Insane Wayne, uh um uh Tila, all of us, mm -hmm. we were riding around to that beat, man, probably for a whole week See before that. we even did anything with it. Mm. 
You know what I mean? Mm. And Tired of Ballin', I think, came right after that. But now, uh, that hook. How did you come up with that hook? Well, we was at the club. Yeah. And we was working on a song that night. Yeah. And um, we went to the strip club. Yeah. Well, actually, when we went, we was in, the, in at the cre I mean, at the studio first, uh -huh. and we were just the vibe. We was just vibeless. I'm like, man, why are we spending all this time? Just let's just go out, get us some air. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know where we was going. Mm -hmm. We ended up going to the strip club, boy. Turned up, came back. Tila was on the mic. Tila was on the mic talking about, boy, with some girls in the club show. No, taking that ain't in the club. Yeah. Then what? So I said, hey, roll that back. Uh. Exactly what he said. I sang. <laughs> Girls in the club show, no. It was like, that's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> and what hurt my feelings was, we sent the record to, you know, we were in Memphis at the time. Yeah. I, I, I was living here, but he had brought me back to Memphis to do his album. Uh-huh. And uh, um, so I, 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 we sent the record. We sent the record to Ball and G. Uh-huh. And, and A Ball and JG was like, man, we want to do this other record, the Twisted record. He yeah. Another record called Twisted. Yeah. You know, with the uh, Run DMC. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, they were big fans of Run DMC, so yeah. they wanted to do that record. And, and we was uh, we was like, yo. I was like, I talked to Draper. I was like, man, look. Exactly. If you could get them you know, to do this record, though. It's gonna be a smash. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, bro. Everybody gonna love it. Yeah. Man, they end up doing that thing. They ain't even really. They weren't feeling it until that thing hit Houston. Are you serious? Man, listen. When we used to rock, man, riding around in Houston, man, when we went moved out there with the record, the record got so hot, I had to move to Houston. Oh. I had to move to Houston because in Houston, it's it's, it's like kind of like Atlanta's kind of similar. Like everybody in Decatur being Decatur. Yeah. Everybody on the south side be on the south side. Yeah. Everybody in Buckhead be in Buckhead. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Some of the Buckhead people kind of float around a yeah. little bit. They be like, okay, I'm going to dare to be different. Tonight I'm going <laughs> to the palace. Can you believe it? We're going to be ratchet tonight. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. What was, so, it, what was it like in Houston when you touched down over there with that hit smash? I mean, Houston was like, it was crazy, dog. It was like nothing but love. It was nothing yeah. but love. But it's coming in the Suave House. Mm -hmm. And me and Tila coming in the Suave House mm -hmm. with Versace shirts. Wasn't nobody rocking that. Yeah. It wasn't even hot then. Biggie wasn't out yet. Think about it now. Yeah. We rocking Versace shirts and all of that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm not saying we the first one to do it, <laughs> but I'm just saying. That's how y'all felt at the time. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You know what I mean? So uh, we, I, we was rocking that sh every day. My God. Every day. How do you feel about your effect on the game as far as the music industry in general, the sound that you brought to it and what you did for producers and the music as a whole? Um, you know when I when I see when I hear the emulation, I, I'm, I'm you know it's it's it, it gives me give me a proud you know feeling, mm -hmm. you know what I mean because I think imitation is the best form of flattery, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. Um, when people just you know I still I don't think I grasp the fact that people be like you're a legend and you're just you know, mm -hmm. you know a southern legend or whatever you want to call it. I mean, because I got so many things that I want to do, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because like now I'm doing like you know more pop music, you yeah. know what I mean. Like a lot of times, like like the Sierra stuff that I did was mm. pop. Not it wasn't on purpose. Yeah, it was just like from my love of dance, seeing her dance, yeah, and the love of hip hop back in the day. I love hip hop. Period. New York hip hop. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That the original hip hop, like yeah. that, that you know, uh, Soul Sonic Force. Yeah, all of that. And I was like, man, we take Soul Sonic Force, and I put that with some 808, and send it to Missy Elliott. Ooh, and what's she gonna do? Because, you know, she had a love for the dance, too. So she understood how the cadence would have yeah. to go. You know what I'm saying? I you mean, know? what was it like when you took this young girl from the city and put her in the game with all of that fire production and music behind it and to see her blow up and take it over? I mean, it's, it was like a dream. It's like, it's like you know, it's unreal. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like unreal to see a, a little girl just, she was in a group. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then, you know, um, she was like, she wanted to spread her wings and, and be a solo artist. Mm-hmm. And me, myself, I didn't even know if she was ready or not, but I just knew that she had something special about her. Mm -hmm. And we was over at Dallas Austin Studio. I had a little room over in the side. If you've ever been there, mm -hmm. the dark, where you go in yeah. there, go to the yeah. right, yeah, by the bathroom. I was right in that little cubby hole, right in there. We made <laughs> her whole first five records right, right there. Did you know that all of them were going to be smashes, though? No. Who knows that? I mean, we think they are. Yeah. Because we jamming to them and we can't get them out of our heads. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that's a difference. You know what I mean? It's songs now that, you know, that I thought should have been smashes. But, you know what I mean? I had to learn over time that it takes more than just 
you know, uh, a smash to mm -hmm. make a smash. Yeah. It takes a team yeah. to make a smash. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. But it takes a team, and a team got to smash. I you know what I'm saying? That. I feel that. So, so us putting that in L.A. Reed's hands and, and Shakir Stewart, rest his soul, yeah. you know what I mean? That was a, a great move for us. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just like Jeezy. You exactly. know what I'm saying? Exactly. A lot of people don't know about that. I mean, tell me about it. I mean, um, you know, um, I think I met, I met Young. Uh, where were we at? We was like uh, over there. What's that little little spot over there where they do the things at the Piedmont Park? Uh, Park Tavern. Park Tavern. Yeah. We're standing outside. There was some kind of something going on. Mm -hmm. And I was standing out in the front. And I seen this dude. He had on some shorts and some Converse. Mm -hmm. And he was standing in front of old school. I think mm -hmm. about. He had, had to put about 30, 40 grand into the old school. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And he had that, that piece. They remember yeah. it said Jeezy? Yeah. He said, had one. And I was like. I seen him quite a few times, but I never seen him. I always saw him from a distance. Uh -huh. And I always saw him with bottles and just balling. Mm -hmm. So I was like, man, he's a neighborhood drug dealer. Yeah, exactly. My man. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? My man. The dope boy, deep boy. Yeah. I thought he was just, you know what I mean, that. Mm -hmm. So I asked, like, man, we was talking. For some reason, we started talking. And I said, man, what you do, man? I see you all the time. He was like, man, I rap. Yeah. I was like, yeah, right. You know, so we exchanged numbers. And um, he met me, I think it was the next day or so. Had to be the next day. Cause he was he was you know really in, trying to get in with me or whatever, and uh, um, hit me the next day and he brought a CD he brought a CD he brought like he had a stack of CDs yeah you know what I'm saying so um he had that the come shop with me album uh huh remember that uh huh it was half and half soft yeah. in the heart yeah yeah you know what I'm saying so he gave me that he gave me that project uh huh you know what I'm saying he had you know a lot of people on there. He had Pastor Troy, Lil John. He had everybody on there. You know, mm -hmm. like like a real CD. They put together. He had real features, real producers, everything on there. Um, so um, I'm like, man, you know, I, I passed it out with the Noontime crew. Uh huh. My boy Measy, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, Noonie, all of us. And I, and I told everybody, man, listen to this dude, man. I'm, I, I like this dude. Just tell me what y'all think about him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And all of that. And uh, fast forward, you know what I mean? Um, Everybody was like, man, they do hard, man, do hard. And it was like, man, you need, we need to see what's up with him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we did a situation with him, mm. with him and Coach K. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I had met Coach K before, but I, me and Coach K wasn't tight like that, but I met him with SMK. I don't know if you know about SMK, but he was mm -hmm. he was one of my, my homeboys from way back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, uh, um, so Coach K, you know, he used to drive a rap van and everything with the GZ on yeah. and all of yeah. that. You know, uh, that, I'm back in them days, so... so um, we introduced him to uh, um, uh, Shakir. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the, 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 the way we did it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I think we did it with my attorney or something like that. We did a situation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? With, with you know, uh, yeah, corporate thug. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, um, and us. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And um, so after that, mm -hmm. went did, did the situation with, with, uh, uh, with them. Mm -hmm. Shake, like, man, look. We need to take we need to take them up and go see L.A. Mm -hmm. We had cut a few few records. We had cut that um you know that uh clear that the shot you know you wanna <laughs> holler, you know you wanna that right there. Yeah. Uh, we did uh, uh I don't know if you ever heard I'm rich, I'm rich bitch. Rich yeah. Cars yeah. In the yeah. So um you know of course uh, uh I, I got with him and we we uh, flew out to Miami and shot a video mm -hmm. uh, with Bun B get money over here. What it do, Pippin? When it shot that video. That's right. And then, you know, hung out with him a whole lot. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. With me and everybody like that. Um, so, uh, uh, here comes the L.A. Reed meeting. Like, you know, mm -hmm. he started getting, heating up in the streets a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, this was before Trapper died. Yeah. So, um, they were like, you know, L.A. You know, LA want to meet him. You know what I'm saying? And whatever, da, 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 da. I'm talking about this dude. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He wanted to meet him. So, we came out there to the meeting. I mm -hmm. mean... Met met with him, sat down. It was me, Big Zach. I don't know you know Big Zach. Mm -hmm. Me, Big Zach, Nooney was in the meeting. Mm -hmm. L.A. Reed, Tina Davis was in the meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, who else? Um, Skane Dollar. Mm -hmm. uh, some, some some of the old schools was in there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, Kevin Lyles. Uh, Jim Jones then was in the building at the time. They were they were uh, right around the corner. Yeah. From L.A. Reed. So. Um, uh, we sitting in there and he's sitting in there. We are having a whole rose gold set, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And played uh, Money Over Here. And, and he was like, he, okay, I'm cool with that. Yeah, I'm cool with that. We played I'm Rich Bitch. Mm. I'm Rich Bitch. When he heard that, when L.A. Reed heard that, he hit a, he hit a button on his, um, on his Blackberry. 
Mm. And everybody, Bartles, Steve Bartles, all of them, the big check writers and all of them started walking in. Yeah. Now, mind you, the room was probably smaller than this. L.A. Reed's room was getting rebuilt. He had just moved to Def Jam. Mm -hmm. So he was getting his, his room renovated. So imagine all of all of these people from the whole staff crammed in this little room watching us, yeah. you know what I'm saying, performing these records exactly. in front of L.A. Reed. You know what I'm saying? So basically, L.A. was like, you know, Listen, he looked at that at, at young. He was like, "Man, look, whatever." He said, "Man, yeah." He said, "Yeah, L.A. Man, whenever when I do this song right here, all the gold bottles go up." He said, "Gold bottles." Mm. He like, "Yeah." He's like, "Man, gold." He said, "Like, like champagne bottles." <laughs> he was like, "They got champ. Like everybody got gold bottles in your club in the club where y'all go." <laughs> I was like, "Maybe he, you know he yeah. feel like that because you know the crew was so big exactly. then and they was all balling like that." Yeah. But he like, man, everybody don't ain't got that kind of money. Exactly. He said, whatever you was doing before you got here today, mm -hmm. he said, you ain't got to do that no more. Yeah. Yeah. He said, you ain't got to do that no more. I'm telling you. He said, you're gonna have everybody moving to the beat of your drum. Mm. He was like, look, what y'all wanna eat? Put us in another room and 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 cut the deal right then. Cut the deal right then. Crazy. There it is. Another bank I gotta ask you about, man. Mind on my money, young bloods, man. I rolled around many a nights, bumping that thing and down mind, Cascade. Oh, and my money on my mind. Is that it? <laughs> yes, sir. Oh. How did that banker come about right there? And, and then, man, how did you feel? Man, that being, stuff come like water, bro. How did you feel? Being I don't even remember creating that. I, I mean, I, I do that all day, bro. The production and the hook at the same time, though, jazz I man. That's a right and a left hook, though. Um, I, I usually wait for the production to tell me what to say. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times I'm going to have some ideas just walking around. Like I might be walking upstairs and just come up with something, and I stop and be like, "Hold up," and go off in the corner and just say it in my phone. Uh huh. And most of the time I don't even use them ideas because I always come up with something new. Yeah, yeah. My whole concept with myself mm -hmm. is if I did it yesterday, it's old. Ooh. <laughs> it's already laid down. It's old, man. Okay, but well, it, it'll find its place. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And I just, I, I got so many ideas, bro. Yeah. It's easy for me, bro. I mean that junk though, man. Mind on my money. How did that one come about? It just mind. I mean, uh, you said it already. Mind on my money. I mean, I think it might have been a conversation that Sean Paul and them was talking about. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Talking about getting to the money or whatever, mm -hmm. and then they just popped off. Yeah. I mean, we did several ideas that day, mm -hmm. so, you know, it was just one of them. Nappy Roots, all now, man. All now. Well, all now. <laughs> they, they actually had the idea. I just put the sauce on it. Uh. It was like, man, the, you know, we got this idea to do this record, you know what I'm saying? The Country Boys on the Rise and That's all of right. that. You know what I mean? So I just went in and co-wrote it with them, mm -hmm. and then, voila, you know what I mean? Mike Karen, you know, engineered that whole thing, you know, from Atlantic Records. You know, and he was just like, man, Jazzy, your voice would just be amazing with that. And then we went down in, 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 in you know, uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky to shoot the video. <laughs> you ever been in blades of grass? Like, mm -mm. you've been, you been around grass that will cut you? <laughs> it will cut you. Like, you have, like, welts on your, your legs when you walk through it. And it sits, like, this high. See, that's crazy. Like, it's like little knives. Like, you can't wear, they was like, don't wear no shorts. See that? And then I went out there, man, my legs was all cut up, like, tender, and, man, that was crazy, dog. Now, Jazz, another bank I got to ask you about, though, man, one of my favorites, man. I'm, I'm going to have to sing it like Jazz, though, man. That hot little player. That was my job right there, I man. Tell me about it, man. I mean, you and Jim Crow laying the funk down for the city. I mean, that was really like like one of the one of the many uh, uh, records that me and Polo produced together, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And, you know... That, that's when I, you know, around that time, well, really before that, then I realized that he had a real dope production skills. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I, like, after I, when I would leave and go to the club, mm -hmm. I would just leave my drums up and all of that. So, so Lo could sit there and just, just bang out on the drums. See, that's crazy. And he would never leave. And to this day, boy, he do not leave the studio. Crazy. He spent a night in the studio. Like, yeah. I, it's crazy because Jermaine wanted to sign us then. Mm. He wanted, he wanted, because he used to play the, he used to play the hell out of that record. Yeah. That fuel. And, and, uh, uh, you remember fuel? <laughs> yeah. We go up there, boy. We walk in, boy. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. love that record. Yeah. Man. Yeah, man. Shout out to Jim Crow, man. Shout out Crease, man. You know, J Bo. Shout out, yeah. uh, uh, and, uh, uh Sean Paul. Yeah. Now, I mean, another Two person. Two real buddy. 
Two wheel buddy. Yeah. Another person I gotta ask you about though, Jazzy man. Mm -hmm. The pimp man, pimp C. Oh man, pimp C. I mean, talk about y'all relationships and how y'all used to get life. played. Yeah. Um, man, you know what's crazy? Mm -hmm. Me and pimp C got close because we got into it what? about a, about a chick <laughs> that that he was that you know that that he was talking to that I was talking to before mm -hmm. and. I came by the studio, Patchworks, when Patchworks was on, on, on uh, 10th Street. Yeah. Um, way back. Uh, I came over there to the studio. I'll make it short. Um, and and I, saw, I saw her car outside. Mm. So I thought she was at the studio. I'm like, what's she doing at the studio? Yeah. So I walked in, and then I heard, you know, music. So I w walked up to the studio. And uh, they were in the break room. They had speakers in the break room. Mm -hmm. And Pimp was in there, you know, rapping and talking about, you know, mink coats and you know all of this his and her mix and yeah. I'm like, okay, two and two. What are we talking about? He talking <laughs> about her. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So me and her weren't weren't really dealing with each other, you know, that much then. Mm -hmm. But um, so I didn't. Something happened and I had to leave. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I wanted to talk to him, but it was too many people around. Yeah. So I had to leave, and then he called me on the phone. Cause somebody else came up, you know. People come visiting, yeah. and certain people, you know, pe we all know the same people. Yeah, you know. And I think somebody, somebody called me and said, "Man, pimp found out about old girl." Ooh. I was like, "What? You want to talk to you, man, Jazzy man? Yo, dog, you ain't tell me, <laughs> man, about the bro, man. Then you know what I'm saying? And, you know all that. You know, we, he going hard. He's like, man, you need to meet up with me, man, like a man. <laughs> talk to me, man. We need to talk, man, face to face, toe to toe." For real. Like you, I'm talking about man. I'm like, man, he was with Brother Hashim. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So Brother Hashim, you know, he gave me a lighter side of the story. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, I don't, do I need to? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the strap her, you know what I mean? Whatever, you know, whatever. Uh, so I met him at the car wash right over there across the street from Brio. Remember the yeah. little car wash used to be yeah. right there? Yeah. It's a gas yeah. station now. Met him over there. I was already over. I'm gonna get my car washed over there. I said, told him to meet me over there. Mm -hmm. So he, I was by myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Met me over there, but I know there's people out there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I mean, I, I already knew, man. Once I saw the guy and I knew, well, Hashim, he wasn't letting, letting nothing happen or whatever. Yeah. So he walked up to me, man, and, you know, we talked about it. You know, he was on a different tone then. I guess he had thought about it and he was like, man, you, man you're a grown man. You're a real dude, yeah. man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, I'm talking to the bro, whatever, da, 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 da. And then we talked, and then, you know what I mean? I was like, man, that's you. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. whatever. You know what I mean? I'm, you know, talked about how, man, we need to get down and do it. Man, I think probably the next few weeks, he might have called me about something, mm -hmm. about a drum machine, about, you know what I mean, how to do this or how mm -hmm. to do that. And I asked him where he was, yeah. and I came over there. Man, we kicked it, man, and then just, man, we were brothers ever since. I mean, what was it like getting together and working together? Because both of y'all could hold a note, and both of y'all could produce. So I know it had to have been crazy in the studio. Man, we was talking time. about, it's crazy, because when he had got out that last time, yeah, we was talking about doing a project together. You know what I'm saying? Me, him, and Sleepy Brown. Oh! You know what I'm saying? And Sleepy didn't even know nothing about it. But he was talking to me about it. I was like, I ain't finna say nothing yeah. about it until he, you know, until he act on it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that was around the time when we started doing, you know, we did that uh, that last album that we did together. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? With uh, um, stopping goes and all of that. Yeah. Um, yeah, and all that. Oh, man. I mean, how do you feel now looking back on those times that you shared with Pimp, man? Man, I mean... Anytime I talk, I would I would always talk to Pimp probably like once or twice a month. Yeah. Anytime we would we would talk if if I seen him calling and I was doing something, I would always wait and I call him back because I know that when I talk to him, we are gonna be talking about two hours. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We would all, all of our kind of, none of our conversations were really short unless we was on the way to you know to the same place. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it was always I, I, he always got something. Uh, uh, from the conversation or from just you know he was always like a big brother mm -hmm. but but a little brother at the same time mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying yeah. it's the weirdest thing like on the life tip mm -hmm. he was like a he was like a big brother to me because he had a lot of old wisdom yeah. but like I think on the business side I had a lot of I was yeah. a little more versed yeah. because I did a lot more business you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. and in other places you know he was yeah. a really underground king you know yeah. deal with a lot of cash mm -hmm. and I was like man how them points work man how that work you know what I'm saying? How it worked for you, like, you know what I'm saying? He yeah. understood it, Yeah. but he just wanted to see what I understood about it. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Or did I have a different view? 
You know what I mean? Or whatever. You know what I mean? He just wanted mm -hmm. to see my side. He was like, yeah, yeah. They told me what it was, what it was. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And all of that. You know what I mean? So we, we, we really taught each other a lot and I learned a lot from him. I can definitely do that. I mean, as far as learning, I mean, what are some of the things that you would like to share that you learned over your 20 plus years in the hey, game? You know what's crazy, too? Like, we were talking about PMC before we jumped off of that. Yeah. He had called me, mm -hmm. and um, I, I had uh, talked to Red. You know, Red, is, you know, managed Bun and, and Pimp, you know what I'm saying, back then. Uh, he was like, Red was like, um, man, Jazzy, man, you be talking to Pimp. You know, he talking real slow, like Jay, like Jay Prince, like, man. We trying to get this dude, man, to get in there and, and do this record, man, with Jay-Z. Oh, he said, man, I'm trying to tell this guy that this could be one of the biggest records of his career. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying that I'm the one that made him do it. Yeah. But I called him and I was like, he was like, man, Jazzy, man, what you think about that shit, man? <laughs> man, what you think about that? Man, trying to take our swag, man, trying to, you know what I'm saying? You know how he was. He was yeah. like, man, trying to take our swag, man, trying to take it up there. You know yeah. what that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm like, man, look, man. I said, man, certain things that you're gonna do. Yeah. I, then I told him the story about man when I was I was a run. Yeah. I said, you know, a run told me. He said, man, Jazzy. He said all of the biggest things that I've done up to this point. He said weren't my idea. Oh lord. He said none of them was my idea. He said basically somebody outside can see something better than what you see because you're in it. They got a different kind of view. Yeah. They got a different view. Yeah. We sitting in the box seat, like looking dead at you. Yeah. Man, if you did this and take that and put that with that, boy, that's kerosene. Boy, you put that on there, and that that's a fire right there, bro. That's crazy. He's like, for real, dog. He changed his whole tone. And next thing you know, boy, he was like, nigga, you can't call me, man, dog. I, man, I had to, I'm in Miami. We, I, <laughs> I got on a mink coat in Miami, dog, with no shirt on, with a cell phone in the head. I'm killing these boys, Jay, with the six on it. I'm like, yeah, man. Oh, man. Yeah, he was excited about that. That's I'm like, crazy. man, it's crazy to see how he wondered should he do something. Mm -hmm. And then, man, you ain't never seen cameras like this, man. That boy High Wim got it all, man. He said, man, High Wim got everything. All the bad bitches, man. Oh, oh my God. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. Yeah. So, yeah, it was, it was, that was a great time, man. Oh, man. It's always a great time with Pimp. Exactly. I mean, another artist that you collaborated with also, man, that boy CeeLo Green, man. Oh, man. That's that's like my counterpart right there, I mean, there, man. tell me about it because, I mean, y'all made some magic over I there, mean, too. CeeLo is special, man, because, you yeah. know, Lo, Lo is a Gemini. Uh. You know what I'm saying? So it's like hot or cold. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It is or it ain't. Yeah. It ain't no in between. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and, you know, when you deal with somebody, like, you going to, you know, we did a project together, a whole album together. Yeah, I know. You know what I'm saying? So, I get to see the, the, the lighter side of low yeah. and the dark side of low. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, and you know, once you learn it, once mm -hmm. you know what's up, mm -hmm. you know, you, you know when to give somebody space, you know when to do, you yeah. know what I mean? It's one of those things, you know what exactly. I'm saying? And I think that's what Gip does so well. Yeah. You know why they so close. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He understand. He, he'll say sorry. He'll be twisting the head. be like, man, you know, man, Jazz, man, you know low. Man, you know, you know, old low man, you know what I'm saying? Low, but he's just such a man, a, a giving guy, man, of, of himself, his spirit, and just a great, you know, what I mean, person. And he he taught me a whole lot about just, you know, just about soul, mm. you know what I'm saying? And I ain't talking about music, I'm talking about just soul. You know what I'm saying? Just just listening to them and and just just learning from them and some some of the thing learning about different different groups that I never gave the time of day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Different ab abstract things, a lot of different abstract things that that I I gave light and and really fed me from. Them. You know what I'm saying? So you know, Lo is like a soul brother, man. That's like yeah. that's my that's my bro, man. Whether we here or there. We always gonna be brothers. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Good brother, man. Great I brother. Definitely He's one of my favorite people, actually. See that. During your time in the game, what are some artists that you saw that you knew had it that nobody else knew had it? Sierra. Mm. Uh, when I brought when I brought CC around, people was like, "What? Are you serious?" Yeah, because I mean, you know, her, her edges weren't pressed. Mm -hmm. She was kind of thick. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if you remember, but you know, they 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 really gave her hell about her hair in, in the beginning. Oh, you serious? Oh yeah, man. yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? We had to really find the right people to get her all the way in tune. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But one thing I, I bet y'all didn't know that that 
a lot of times, like even with Beyonce, part of her thing mm -hmm. when she was like coming up mm -hmm. was to have some imperfections on purpose. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, you see, th those things make you human. You know what I'm saying? That's right. And then when you become to a place where you just get too prim and proper, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Then people start saying, the "What song. brought about that change? Yeah. Like, what? Why are you holding your fork like that?" I mean, <laughs> I know etiquette class does some things, but it yeah. don't do that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So you know, I think you know, um, man, it's it's just you know, a lot of things. Things just change over time, man. Yeah, speaking of over time, I mean, have y'all been able to get back together and do some more jamming? Um, we we got together like around the time when her and Future were together. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I came front like he was really one of the moving forces of it because I mean, Future is such a he was a fan and like around around the time when I was like super hot, mm -hmm. when he was just me head. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I used to yeah. Be, he used to hang around with. He used to be out, be out with Noon all the time. Yeah. Noon really had a thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. For this for this kid. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And he used to bring bring Future around, and 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 um he used to just be around the studio. We never really had a chance to work. Mm -hmm. I really never got a vibe. You know from from to to listen to his stuff. Mm -hmm. But I always just thought he was a cool cat. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then when when he came back, he was just express how he was a fan yeah and, and you know he was really trying to pull it together he was like you know he was the one that called me literally was like yo when we was at uh uh, uh at the crib over there when they were shooting the body party uh, yeah. uh video mm -hmm. he called me on the phone like because i was running around the house somewhere because you know it's my people's house yeah so they, he called me on the phone like yo where you at dog Come on, it's time to shoot your shot. I mean, I need you in the middle of this thing. Like, Ooh. we're all up in the middle of it. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, you know, you know, kind of gave me the whole skin yeah. on, yeah. on how we need to move. And man, stay right close to me. They're going to have a camera on us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I need you to be right there, right in front of her. You know what I'm saying? And, and greet her in the video and all of that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That was really, he was like, uh, had a lot to do with that. He really, like, corresponded with me. And, and, and you know, the mm -hmm. future's a real dude. I mean, speaking of that, I mean, I hate to be that guy, but I mean, you see what's going on on Instagram and on TV and everything else with their relationship. What are your yeah. thoughts on all that crazy stuff? Um, I don't, I don't get into that kind of yeah. stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because I know them, I know them as people, so I don't have to resort to that. I don't yeah. have to look at that. I don't have to. I don't really get anything from it. Exactly. Because, I mean, they put they put so much bull out there about all of us. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Whoever. You know what I mean? So, um. I, I don't feed from that. If I yeah. want to know something about somebody, I call them. Exactly. I know them. That's you know right. what I mean? That's right. Like, man, what is they saying about that? Or, you know, or, or the next kin or somebody mm -hmm. that's standing right there or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, what's up with that? No, that ain't not. Okay, it's over with me. What do you, you know think about being in the industry and having to deal with the media in your private life like that? And how do you balance that and have a regular life at the same time? Um, Shoot, you just have to have a regular life regardless of yeah. anything. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's anybody. I mean, some things you just have to cut off. Just like sometimes you you on your you on your phone mm -hmm. and you spend a whole lot of time on your phone, and it, sometimes the phone just sucks you in because yeah. it's so much good juicy information <laughs> coming up out of it. But mm -hmm. sometimes you just gotta get away from it mm -hmm. and realize what made you, you know, be able to afford that damn phone. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's right. And keep not just that phone on, but your son, your mama, your sister, your cousin. You know, we take care of a lot of folks. That's right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. And, and not, not like they can't take care of themselves, but, you know, it's just it's just something that we never been given when we were kids. You exactly. know what I'm saying? A lot, exactly. lot, of, lot of kids, a lot of kids, I mean, grew up, and I'm not saying that, that, that I, I, I got people where they just depend on me mm -hmm. and have to be dependent on me, but some of them do. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I feel that. I feel so that. So we got to be in some good graces and we got to have a good sound mind. That's right. You know That's what right. I mean? I'm with you. Lastly, I mean, what's next for you though, Jazzy? Um, Man, more vodka. Uh, uh, of course, I got a hookah. I, I meant to bring my hookah too, man. I, I was actually not at home, and I was gonna grab it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, my hookah I did with Hayes Tobacco. Yeah. Um, out of Houston, Texas. Okay. Yep. Yeah, um, did a situation with them. Um, I got a kid. Uh, uh, me and my boy Vaughn. Uh, you know Javon Sims. Yeah. No, uh, Vaughn. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we got a we got an artist by the name of Brandon Blue. Yeah. From from out here, and some people might have known him as Dionysus. Yeah. He's freestyle. Okay. But we didn't turn him into something else. Get out of here. Coming man. real soon, man. Coming real soon. Amazing Caucasian. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he's dope. I mean, we we talk about something. We talk about going to the Grammys with this thing. Oh man, and you know I don't even crazy. say that. I don't even say that, bro. Yeah. But this music is so incredible, though. 
And I just uh, produced this, this uh, uh, group that I've come real close with called Titanium. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Over there with my man uh, Carlos over at Seven Entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, they really doing some big things. Uh, mm -hmm. Group called Titanium. They got a record called Best Weather. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's blowing up right now on the pop side. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing a lot of a lot of pop stuff now. Yeah. You know what I mean? I can definitely dig that. And another question it. I got to ask you about though: How do you feel about this new digital game versus the old school game with the hard copies? You know, the CDs, the tapes, the records, and everything's going digital now. Man, I believe in progression, but mm -hmm. at the same time, you know. Um, it's that's a hard one, man, because mm -hmm. it's, it's it's double sided, and you you gotta you gotta adapt. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of labels, the problem I got is the labels telling you that it ain't no money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, but it's it, it is some money, but it, the money is just in a different place. Yeah, so right. when the money is in a different place and you don't know nothing about it, then they feel like they don't have no liberty to tell you that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, they gonna tell you it's in digital, it's in the 360 deal, it's in the merchandise. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You sold 500 t-shirts at that concert at 30 bucks a pop. Yeah. Mm. yeah. You ain't selling no records at 30 bucks a pop. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But my my thing, it, it, you know, with the major labels is, is you know what I'm saying, uh, shout out to all of them. But yeah. at the same time, I mean, there's, there's good people out there, but, but like, if... I feel like if you don't know how much you make per record, mm -hmm. dollar for dollar, mm -hmm. then I think that's shade. Mm. Like if you can't tell me, like like I walk in there and be like, like look, how much do I make if I sell that record right there? How much do I make? Yeah. Nine nine nine, right? Mm -hmm. How much do I make? Well, it's the point system. No, no, no. no. <laughs> how much do I make? Yeah. Cut me that kind of deal. Mm. Cut me a deal like that. Yeah. And I cut a deal with you. I can dig that. Yeah. You say I make 50 cents on a dollar, I can, I can buy it out. Yeah. Y'all can get down with that. Or oh, 25 cents on a dollar. Mm -hmm. You're going you gonna to spend all the money. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What do you think about the independent grind now? Because a lot of artists are refusing to sign with the majors right now. They'd rather be independent. I mean, if if you got the if you got the heart to go independent, you can do it. You got yeah. to have the heart. You know what I mean? And you got to have the drive. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you can't be afraid to be told no. That's right. You know what I'm saying? And you can't you gonna have to talk with your money too a lot of times. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got yeah. you got because you got to pay. You got to get get out there and you got to move around and go yeah. places. It costs for plane tickets. It costs for for to gas to mm -hmm. drive from town to town. You got to get out there and really grind. You know what I mean? People think that just I'm jumping on my internet, blah, 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 blah. but the best thing is always being in touch with the people. Like if you can touch mm -hmm. the people, then that's it. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you can leave a lasting impression on somebody, then that goes way further than a phone call, a tweet, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Instagram, any any of that. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? That's right. That organicness, people people want to know that you're human. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Even the people in high places. Because a lot of them just be in a box like this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and they meet the people, but they don't really get a chance to, exactly. like, really, really get into them. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I so, mean. yeah, I, you know, I can't come from, come from the old school, too. You know what I mean? So, you know, I remember when, you know, you had to come in there with your poster, sign everybody a poster, <laughs> you know, give half of the staff, you know, flowers and <laughs> fruit. Or find out what they like before mm -hmm. they got there and bring them, bring mm -hmm. this one a rib dinner, <laughs> this one a chicken dinner. You might have to go... Four or five different places before you yep. even got to the building. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Mando. Man. Yeah, man. I can do the digging with Jazzy. Man. Appreciate you coming right. through this thing, right. boss. Man, I appreciate it, man. Yes, sir. 100. Wish you nothing but the best and much success. Beehive Radio Shout. It's Hot 1079, man. Let's go. Oh, boy.